Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. One of the things I love about running a second-hand business and cleaning out house lots is that I get a never-ending variety of things that I have to fix. And uh, some of them I know a bit about, others I haven't had any experience at all, and I like trying to work it out. So this piece is probably in 1920s, and it's an early gramophone, wind-up gramophone. It's, uh, what brand is it? The Celesta machine. It's um, pretty common design. It's a portable one. Uh, it's a wind-up crank. There's a the handle for it's in there. This one's in pretty good condition. Quite often they end up in sheds and get very rusty. So this handle comes out here and it winds into threads into this slot and it winds the spring up. Now quite often in these old things the springs actually break. This one the spring seems all right. And it's actually in operational condition. However, it's supposed to have a brake on it. And that lever seems to do nothing. And when I wind, I'll just slide it to the edge of the table here. When I start to wind the spring up, and it's got to thread itself in first before it engages. And now it's starting to wind the spring. And you can see the turntable starts straight away. And I can't actually stop it. So there's supposed to be a break there. It's either just bent or something. But what we're going to do is take it apart, have a look, see if we can get that sorted out. The rest of it's in pretty good condition. It's a little bit worn on the, the leatherette type finish here. There's a little bit of surface rust on the latches, but it's um I'm not going to restore it. It's perfect condition to resell. I like the fact that it's got a bit of age to it and it shows it. I don't like things looking brand new because you know, they may as well be a reproduction. A little bit of wear to the handle there, but that still seems strong enough. And as you can see, the spring seems to work fine. But we'll pull it apart and see if we can work out why the brake isn't working. And then we'll try and find an old 78 and we'll give it a bit of a spin. There's no visible screws to get into here, so I'm assuming this turntable just lifts off. And there we go, as easy as that. And there we have some of the mechanisms, and there we go. The brake looks pretty simple. It looks like it looks like it's just a rubber um, piece which rubs against the inside of the the uh, turntable. So that's pretty simple. Now that's gone very hard, and it's flat on one side, so it's pretty pretty well. It needs replacing with a bit of rubber, so we'll find something for that. So that's going to be a very easy fix. Uh, I'm not sure what this does. I think it may just vary the speed somehow. But I don't think I'll worry starting to play with that. And there's really no need to take it apart any further than that. So that was a bit simpler than I thought. But what I'll do is I'll undo this screw here, which is a pivot point, And we'll have a better look at this. But it looks like it's just a, a firm piece of rubber. In fact, that's going to come loose now, I think. Not sure if it's threaded or just pushes on. All right, it doesn't lift up very easily, so we'll take that screw out and we'll have a look at that a bit closer. So it's a small flat screwdriver required. You won't find any Phillips heads on these things. If you do, they're either a reproduction or they've been fiddled with because Phillips head screws didn't come into general use until you don't usually see them on equipment until into the, into the 1970s, maybe late 60s. Um, they were probably invented much earlier than that, but... They just don't turn up in general equipment. Uh, 1970s is usually the um, the time. Uh, that's a little bit burred and chewed out, that one. So we'll have to make sure we've got plenty of downwards pressure on the screwdriver. Okay, that's got it. And it sounded like something fell off the back of it. So it was a very long screw. So we may have to get into this a bit further and see what's going on there. Alright, but as far as this piece goes here, it's just, it looks like there's a screw in there. So we'll have to take that out and see if there's a, if the rubber is a particular shape or whether we can just slip something over. Okay, so that piece is extremely hard and brittle. I think I could probably just give it a hit with a hammer and break that section off. And we'll have to find something... Uh, at least as thick and probably with a little bit of rubbery give in it so it'll work as a brake. You can see where that's been rubbing but it just hasn't done anything to stop the, 
the uh, rotational force of the spring. So I've decided it's probably silly to not pull this off and have a bit of a look and we might as well grease the, uh, the motor, the, the uh, drive spring, uh, give it a little bit of a service while we're here. So, and plus also whatever fell off the bottom of that screw I obviously have to uh, rescue and reattach. So there is a series of little screws around the side and I think that's what will hold this assembly in. I won't be undoing these because these hold the motor assembly to this timber. So if I undo those, it's all going to fall in. So we'll take it all out in one assembly. And there's the first one out. They're very long little screws, these. Look at that. So they go right into the side of the casing. And so I'll take the rest of these out. Isn't it nice of them to supply a built-in parts tray? All right, so I've got... That was one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of them to get out. That's got all the screws out. Now we're going to have to do something with the actual um, player part of it because I don't want that to flop around and get damaged. They run from just a very fine needle here and they don't use any electricity for anyone that hasn't had anything to do with these gramophones. There's simply just a diaphragm type assembly in here and the needle, don't know if you can hear that, but the needle sound vibrates through into the diaphragm and it actually amplifies just through the the physics of it rather than any electricity. So we don't want to damage this. So these usually come out. I think it's just a set screw at the back, which I'll undo to take that out. And then we also have to take out a handle that we screwed in because that actually screws into the mechanism. So we'll get all those out of the road and we'll be able to lift the whole thing out of the case. There we go, I thought they might have pushed in but it was actually threaded so it took a while to actually undo that. I had to take the arm right over the side to undo it. Anyway, we've got that out and it appears to be in pretty good condition. Alright, now if all goes to plan that should lift out. I haven't actually had one of these apart before, so I've seen one of the motors and I've had a little bit to do with the mechanisms, but I haven't taken one up out of its case before. Alright, it does all come out. We'll turn it over on the towel and have a good look at it. Okay, so the motor is here. It's basically large, like a clockwork, clockwork motor. The, um, all this assembly is for amplifying the sound. It's like basically like a horn. And it's tin plate. And that all appears to be in pretty good order. There's been no moisture in here. Doesn't look like there's been any mice or anything in there. Now I'm not sure how this part comes off here, but if we can take it off, it'll give us a much better look at the motor and we'll be able to grease it. Now, the little thing that fell off was just simply a nut. So we might have to put that arm back on this one we'll replace the, the brake rubber and we'll put that arm back on so that we can do that nut up tight before we reassemble this so let's see if we can get this horn assembly off uh, it looks like this one just unthreads as well so it's like an extremely fine plumbing thread and they're certainly very long Well, this one looks like it actually has a, there we go, it has a reducing bush as well. Or is that just a pivot? Oh no, that unscrews as well. Anyway, we don't need to take them both off. But that all looks to be in good order. So now the whole trumpet assembly will lift away. Look at that. Nice piece of tinsmith work there. So that's all great. Radio, and there's the works of it. There's the motor. And it has uh, a kind of a governor assembly on it so that it doesn't, it regulates the speed of it basically so that the whole thing doesn't get faster and faster. Obviously, when you're playing a record, it needs to be a regulated speed. And that governor, it just works on the weights expanding with centrifugal force and it controls the drive. The driver's through a worm gear, 
and it looks in pretty good order in here it looks like it's been fairly well greased I think we'll just get a little bit of fresh grease on some of these worm drives uh, I don't think there's any reason at all to start pulling it apart it still seems to work fine so that'll be fairly easy we'll give that a grease we'll put that other little lever back and that's where the nut goes and we'll have to find something for the brake I've just wound this up so that you can see it all operating it's really smooth beautiful piece of engineering so you can barely hear it turning so there's the big drum that's got houses the spring you can see that's turning very slowly and it then drives now yeah, we'll spin it around this way now it's just stopped i only ran it up a little bit but uh, anyway, there we go. That's how it all works. It's nice to see it in operation. And there's our little brake material that was there. I told you it was brittle. One little tap with the pair of pliers. That's all it took. One little tap and it just fell apart. So we need to find something that's a bit more flexible and rubbery. Uh, and then we can put it back together. I just had a look in my little jar of rubber grommets here. And I found one that's nice and thick and around about the right length. And it will squash up a little bit as I do the nut up. So I think that'll work. I might even cut that end piece off so it's a little shorter. But uh, yeah, that's probably out of a DVD player or something I've scrapped. And I think I've mentioned I save all these. You never know when they'll come in handy. And I fitted that grommet there and it, it actually works really well. Uh, the screw has squashed out a little bit. Uh, I cleaned up this screw that we had that bad burr on before and it's come up really good. I'll see if I can zoom into that. I recut a little slot in it and I just polished the burrs off the top. And I'm using my new favourite tool. I bought a Dremel recently and it's been in, a, in the container here for a while. I haven't actually used it. But uh, yeah, there's a whole range of little cutting wheels and buffers and sanding discs. And it's great. So I did a good job of repairing that screw. Uh, so that's good. Now the only issue I've got is that that rubber is quite thick and heavy and and grippy and that's really good but we have limited movement between these two screws and I just tried the disc in here. I've had to put all the parts in another spot and it spins nicely and then when I move the lever it just grabs at the end but it's hitting that stop screw so it's rubbing but it's not really a break it's only just touching so what I thought I might do I could either reposition that little screw there but I don't really want to have another hole in the wood even though it's underneath but I thought I might just use the Dremel and just just grind a little whisker off the inside of that lever so it goes across it only has to go across a couple more mil we can't go too much further because the end will hit the side of the, the timber here. But yeah, just to gain us a, a mill or two should be fine for the brake to work properly. So I'll just mark where we want to take a little bit out. Just there. We're not going to take very much because a small uh, piece of uh, section of movement here will equal quite a large movement at the end. And we haven't got a lot of extra room to play with anyway. There we go, that should work. Just taking a little bit off there should give us enough movement. Alright, that's back together. Let's give this brake another test. That's on there. Oh, beautiful. And that actually stops it quite firm. And we just got enough movement that the end of the lever here is only just, it's not quite touching the timber, so that's perfect. Okay, now that that's fixed, I've um, I've already put the nut back on. I was fairly confident that that was going to be right. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the gears. Uh, if we were, were restoring this, I would pull it all apart, wash it all up, uh, check the condition of the springs, grease all the points properly. Uh, but as it's still working well and there's no issues, it's nice and quiet, it doesn't appear to have any 
physical prop, uh, damages. Uh, I'm just going to smear a little bit of grease on a couple of the moving parts, just the obvious ones, and it will be fine. Our main job really here was to um, fix the brake, and I think we've succeeded. Okay, it's all back together as far as this assembly goes. So we've just got to drop it back in the case and put the securing, securing screws around the outside. And then we can actually play a record. There we go, that's right. Now we'll put this back in its holder so that it doesn't flop around anywhere. And we'll get all these screws in. And then we'll wind it up and just make sure the brake works. In fact, we'll do that now before we put the screws in. So I've just wound this up a bit. I'm not sure how many winds you're supposed to give them. But I'm not going to do it too tight. Now the brake's on and the turntable isn't turning. I'll release the brake. And away she goes. Beautiful. And I probably, we probably shouldn't just stop it with the brake because it's going to put a lot of extra pressure on that rubber piece. We could simply stop it with a finger and the brake will hold it. I think that's probably a good strategy. Um, you'd need to talk to someone that collected gramophones to know what's best there, or perhaps you could Google it. But that makes more sense to me. If we're going to slow it right up with that rubber, it's going to wear it out much quicker. Okay, I'll put these screws in, and we'll. Um, there's a record in the top here I didn't notice before. So we'll put on uh, John Charles Thomas singing Mother of Mine. It's probably a 1940s record by the looks of it, an old 78. And here we go. We'll put the needle over. And these records don't have a track in, so you have to kind of start it at the start of the song. And release the brake. And here we go. I won't be able to play much of it. How's that? That's pretty cool, hey. I don't think I'm allowed to play too much music due to copyright. I'm not sure about these oldies, but we better stop it there. But that seems to play beautifully. It's amazing the noise, the, the loudness you get out of just that little diaphragm and the speaker assembly like a horn underneath. So, alright, we can stop the record. The brake should hold it perfectly. There we go. Problem fixed. Uh, just a little bit of a quirky one for you. It's not a major repair. It was just a little job. Didn't cost me anything. Used a um, little rubber grommet that I got out of the e-waste somewhere. There's the only parts we had left over with a broken one. And that's gone. That's hard. That's like very brittle. So um, nice little late 1920s probably gramophone portable unit. What's it worth, I hear you ask? I would probably have that in the shop for about oh, $150 maybe, $175 now that it works. And I think Coco wants to hear another song. Okay, catch you in the next video. Bye.